Hi, welcome to uh, building a Craigslist scale map installation with using OSM data. Um, my name is Dennis Watson. I'm a uh, software engineer at Craigslist. Um, so we'll, we'll jump right into it. I'm sure, is, has anyone not heard of Craigslist in here? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, anyway, Craigslist is a free local classified um, ad site. You can get a job, post your house, uh, find all sorts of goods and services. Uh, we get about 50 billion page views per month. Um, we see about 60 million users in the U.S. That's, uh, we have about 100 million uh, new classified ads each month. Uh, so there are 700 sites. Uh, these are in seven, uh, 70 countries, and the site is translated, internationalized into 13 different languages. So this is kind of giving you the idea of, of the size of the, uh, the scale um, that Craigslist works at. Now, uh, let's talk about what that means uh, in terms of, of tiles. So the reality of tiles is that uh, Zoom level zero is, is one tile, Zoom 11 is four million tiles, and it, uh, it grows that way so that uh, Zoom 17, uh, 17 billion tiles, and 18, then is 69 billion. So um, these are pretty big numbers as well. Um, this comes up to 91 billion uh, tiles in total. If you assume that each individual tile is around 10K uh, times those 91, 91 billion files, that's 853 terabytes of storage. So, um, you know, this, uh, it's a lot of tiles, it's a lot of storage. Um, even for Craigslist, this is, you know, this, this was a problem that we had, to, we had to sit down and think about how can we, uh, how can we do this. Now, let's multiply the two uh, sides of this equation together. The number of page views that, that Craigslist has to deal with, the number of ads, the number of users, uh, uh, times the amount of data that we've got. So let's assume that we have these 100 million posts. There's 30 days in a month. Now, I'm using 1% as a baseline here. Let me emphasize, this is just to get a, some sort of lower bounds estimate so that we have something to talk about. So this is a back of a napkin um, calculation. This is totally off the cuff. There's no real. Thing. This is a lower bounds estimation. So that means that if we have to geocode on 1% of the new ads that are posted, that's going to mean uh, 33,000 geolocation, geolookups uh, per day, assuming that we just do one per ad. That's going to take you way over any usage limit that you can get off of any other geolocation service. So assume we have those 50 billion page views uh, in a month, 30 days in a month. Let's assume 1% of those actually hit a map you're looking at uh, 60 million map views uh, per day. So that's like the lowest number we've seen so far. That's actually pretty reasonable. Um, again, that 1% is just a lower bound. Um, so let's jump right into it. In order to, in order to map enable uh, our ads, we needed to be able to uh, geolocate or geo-reference the advertisements uh, that, the, the, that the user was putting up there so we can place the pin on the map. Um, so how do we do that? Well, like I said, we couldn't really do that externally. We had to build an in-house uh, system to do that. So first part, it's a two-part problem. First is the na natural language processing uh, part of the problem where you've, the user is inputting some sort of data and you have to, to parse it to say, this is the house number, this is the street, this is the state, that sort of thing. Um, so we have to process that user input. Um, one of the big things was actually scrubbing some of the garbage that uh, you know, users will enter in. Um, we found that uh, apartment numbers and stuff like that were, were often very confusing to the geocoder, so uh, we had to take those out. Uh, another big thing is to sort of normalize ST to street, or because uh, you'll have like one ST would be first, so uh, turning those nominals into, into words and stuff. Um, one of the things we do when we're geocoding is we'll um, add data from the context of the server. So for example, if we know that someone's in the SF Bay area posting an ad, uh, we can start to inject that data to say, well, we think they're in California, we think they're in this you know, San Francisco Bay area. Um, that still doesn't narrow it down completely because you know, they might be, uh, it might be First Ave, it might be First Street, it might be in Oakland, it might be in San Francisco, it might be in San Jose. But, um, and then we can also do things like um, if they're putting in zip codes or putting in some, uh, you know, Dolores Park or something like that, we might be able to look that up in geonames and, you know, start to get a, uh, start to get a fix that way. 
So now that we've cleaned it up and uh, we're starting to add context, uh, we'll parse that address finally into fields. We use the GeoStreet address US Perl module. Uh, Craigslist is a Perl shop, go Perl. Um, that module has been extended to handle uh, Canada uh, because uh, Canada does not have all numeric uh, zip codes. Canada has provinces, not states, et cetera. Um, we can then, once we've parsed that into fields of street number, street name, et cetera, we can look that up in a gazetteer uh, organized database. Uh, we use Geocoder US. Uh, yeah, Eric, that was there. there, you go, there. Um, so we can look up the street address. Uh, we can also, uh, we assume that uh, our users, we allow them to also enter uh, street uh, intersections. So we'll do a second lookup. Finally, all this data, including the, the sort of the, the context that we've injected, uh, anything from geo names, these, these, two, um, these two lookups in the Gazetteer database, are, are merged and sorted by sort of a radius confidence. So we'll have, this is where exactly where we think you are, and secondly, we think it's this, and, se and thirdly, that. Um, all this happens asynchronously um, in a worker job that is outside of the um, web server itself. So we can handle uh, a lot of concurrent um, uh, geocode lookups, and this means that you know, we can handle a lot of people posting at the same time. So. That's, that's the first step of uh, being able to uh, be able to do this. Um, now, let's talk about actually serving maps. Um, so we have these billions of, of tiles. Um, how, can we, how can we serve these things in a, uh, in a time frame that's, um, that our users expect? So Craigslist pages, um, if you've seen the site, it's, uh, it's pretty fast. Uh, we take pride in that. We, the users expect to be able to click in, look at something, and bounce around the site pretty quickly. So we didn't want maps to be able to, to hold that up. Um, it's, so you know, we have a pretty, pretty high quality of service. So we decided that we, would, we could pre-render. So we pre-render the entire Earth from zoom level 0 down to zoom level 11. Um, we didn't want to pre-render the entire Earth. It was going to take a long time. It's going to be a lot of storage. So from zoom 12 to 17, we pre-render only around Craigslist uh, site areas. So we have a lat lawn for you know, every city that we offer a Craigslist site for, um, and we can sort of draw a bounty box around that and, uh, and do just the area around that down to Zoom 17. We completely skip Zoom level 18. Um, it's just too close. It doesn't provide context for our users. Um, we found that you know, when you're looking at that pin on the map, you kind of want to know, OK, well, where about is it? Not, not exactly, you know, if it's if it's on this this tenth of the block or the second tenth of the block didn't make much sense. Um, but what about the rest of it? So if someone tries to zoom into the uh, middle of the Atlantic Ocean, they're going to get a 404 image. It's just a kind of a gray square. Um, of course, we also uh, do a lot of uh, caching at the HTTP level. This assumes that um, the you know, the first person sort of uh, takes that hit from, getting, from fetching the tile off a disk, and then it gets uh, stored at our um, HTTP cache. So this allows us to serve the maps at what we call, you know, a Craigslist speed that uh, our users are used to, and, you know, it makes it, makes it, uh, makes it pretty quick and snappy. All right, so let's talk about that, about rendering. How can we, how can we get the rendering process done um, uh, in a reasonable time. So the first thing that uh, we found tuning was the, uh, the map style. By, you want to tune, you want to, you want to design your map with a sense of purpose. So like I said, um, our maps are sort of there to provide a context of where is this item for sale? Where is this house located? Sort of a little bit what's, what's nearby um, and uh, it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, we're not trying to uh, build roads or anything off of it. So in that, in that sense, uh, less is more principle applies here. Um, just show the context, emphasize, uh, you know, what the, people, what the people really need and provide that context. And then we also, we also took out a lot of stuff from the map, like the points, a lot of the points of interest um, that, that we're not really adding any context and we're just sort of distracting. Um, 
we use our we use our own style uh, for the map. We started. There's a lot of good styles that are out there to start from. Uh, there's the OSM style itself. Uh, there's the ones from uh, I think it's Styman, which is called Toner. I don't know if that's available, but I think someone made a clone of it. You can get it on GitHub. It's pretty good. There's another good one called Pandonia, which I think was an offshoot from OSM Bright, and ours is uh, based on OSM Bright. Uh, but like I said, we we use that as a uh, a base starting point, and you know we altered it there for our own purpose, and I think it's turned out pretty well. I've gotten some uh, good good comments on the map style, so you know, yay me. Um, so um, and other folks and, and crazes too. So uh, when you're working on the style, think about uh, what zoom level you're at, and again, it's context, context, context. So at the higher zoom levels. You don't see any uh, any of the smaller, you know, secondary tertiary roads. There's uh, only uh, only certain types of things like the buildings only show up at zoom level 17 because they just don't they just start to add visual noise and it slows the rendering process down a lot. Um, one thing that we try to pay a lot of attention to um, at all the zoom levels are the labels. Um, you want to get the proper label density to, uh, you want to have, you want to label certain things at certain zoom levels and you don't necessarily need it at, at lower zoom levels. For example, you're in the mid zoom levels, you might want to label cities, higher zoom level states, uh, lower zoom levels, you really don't want, you know, a big California showing up, uh, you know, in the middle of the street somewhere. Um, when, you're, when you're doing label density, uh, prefer the uh, error towards denser labels. It's kind of frustrating when you've got this map and you can see, you know, a bunch of things like crossing and you sort of know where that is, but then you got to you got to uh, zoom out to figure out to see the label to know the exact name, um, and it's really hard to get right. Um, one other thing in terms of ramping up the performance uh, that's kind of style related is that your style will consist of sort of CSS like stuff or, you know, that this this road should be blue or this road, uh, river should be blue. Um, but also the SQL queries that uh, you know tells the style where to go into your PostGIS database to get that data. Um, these styles necessarily, um, as you get them from GitHub or whatever, <coughs> don't have a lot of tuning applied to them. Um, I added about uh, uh, 20 some indexes to our to our OSM Bright derived style, and was able to get the tile rendering up. Um, you know, much much better from uh, at a much higher rate from that. Um, but also take a really profile the SQL, look for functions that are not necessary. Um, there was a bug in the OSM Bright that I think has actually been taken care of, where um, it was applying a projection function where it didn't need to, and it was making any indexes that you added uh, unusable because of that function. So just watch out for that. Okay, so um, now that we've got our style, let's start rendering tiles. Um, what we do is we have a, uh, we call it a tile version. We have zero through through nine. Um, you can see it, we'll say map.crisis.org and then tile version and, and then the ZYX. Um, and what, what that allows us to do is, um, we'll talk about it in a second, is uh, as we import new data, we'll actually re-render the entire process and then uh, we can flip from zero T00 to T01, and then users start to get uh, new tiles, and you don't end up with an area where you know a style or the data has changed, and all of a sudden you know the tiles don't match. So um, the first step is going to pre-render the entire Earth uh, from zoom level zero to eleven. Um, here's the command. So we use um, mod tile, part of the Apache project. Um, also comes with uh, render D. I think it's, oh, it's an Apache module. I mean, it, I misspoke. I'm not sure if it's a part of the Apache project, but um, it uh, it's an Apache module, um, and one of the tools that it comes with is render list, and this command will tell it to render everything um, from zoom level zero to eleven. Uh, put it look in the uh, style the uh, style T zero zero, and it will place those uh, tiles in T zero zero. The N twenty means don't worry about load, just uh, just let the server, just let it keep rendering and where to talk to render D. Render D is the, is the beast that actually is doing the work here. So 
Um, that only takes a few minutes, um, and now you've got the entire world from 0 to 11. Yay. Um, now the good stuff happens. We're going to pre-render everything from 12 to zoom level 12 to 17. Um, like I said, we have a we have a lat lawn for every Craigslist site. Um, we'll make a list of those, and then we'll we'll add three degrees to every lat lawn and kind of make a bounding box that way. And we get a rough uh, we get a rough usage area around you know where we people uh, place ads. So. Um, so far, it works out that way. We, maybe in the future, we can get more complicated and have you know actual like uh, uh, polygon shapes around that. But so far, this is working. So we'll do that, and now we've got a list of uh, a list of lat lawn pairs that we'll want to uh, render from 12 to 17. So we'll then divide and conquer that list over n number of um, uh, rendering servers. So each one will get you know, one over nth of those pairs, and we'll just start to render, we'll use the same command to, to render that. So here, uh, we're saying the lowercase, uh, lowercase z is your uh, zoom level. Um, x1, y1, x2, y2 would be the from lat, uh, from lat lawn to lat lawn, but these, would, these are actually in terms of tile numbers. And computing from lat lawn to tile number uh, is pretty trivial. The, the formulas are on the OSM wiki for multiple languages, including Perl and Python, et cetera. Um, so in essence, we run through the zoom levels from 12 to 17 for all of the, uh, for all of the tiles that, tile numbers that are represented in this particular lat lawn pair. And boom, now we've, uh, now we've got uh, all the tiles from 12 to 17 for a particular lat lawn, and these are these will happen for every lat lawn that's in our uh, list that we generated earlier. But we've got these over several servers, so we we'll, we actually want them to um, all be we want them to be uh, spread across multiple servers. So it may not be intuitive, but you can actually then just sort of pour the pour them all uh, into one bucket and sync them across using rsync. Um, and we, they don't clobber each other. Uh, it works out pretty well that way. So you'll still want to check to see that each, each server has all the same tiles now, because there are going to be a lot of them. Um, and what I do is basically do, you, do a DUSK on, on a particular, uh, on particular, one particular server's uh, you know, tile layer here and then take an MD5 uh, of all the subdirectories that are in there. And if they come out to be the same, we've got the same, and that every server is the same. So um, this, is, this has gotten us now from, we've got the entire Earth from 0 to 11. And then for our particular areas, uh, 12 to 17, we've divided and conquered across several servers, synced up all the servers to be the same, and then proven that all those servers have the same number of tiles. We're not going to get any uh, unnecessary 404s or any errors that way. So um, now that's great. Well, there's going to be new, new OSM data um, every couple of weeks. So uh, we'll just get a new, you know, new data load from Planet OSM. Uh, we'll go from our you know, tile set 0 to tile set 1, re-render everything. Um, and then once we're done, we verified all the servers got the same thing, that we can flip from the URL where the JavaScript is you know, told to pull the uh, tiles from, from T00 to T01. Um, the trade-off here, as with uh, you know, pre-rendering, is uh, we're sacrificing you know, space for time. So um, here, we're going to. Because we're, we're keeping two uh, layers, you need two to three times as much space as you would. So now you've got your tiles out there. Uh, it's, start to it's time to start serving them. Uh, there are some other non-intuitive parts of making sure all the network pieces are, are set up. You probably want to have some uh, DNS aliases of map 0 to map 9, for example, so the browser will make concurrent requests. Um, and they can actually all point to the same DN to the same IP address, but you know this is one of those webby things that uh, the browsers will will make concurrent requests instead of one tile at a time. Um, you're going to have lots of little tiny connections because these files are small, so uh, 
you know, be aware of that. You need to reconfigure your load balancers and firewalls, etc. Um, like I said, we're using uh, Montile. Um, those are those Montile serves uh, PNG files from little uh, what they call meta tiles, which is a bunch of uh, PNG files themselves that are uh, concatenated together. Um, everything is pre-rendered, so we're not running RenderD at this time. We're not running Postgres. Uh, if anything, if any tile request comes that we don't have pre-rendered for, we just we just serve the 404. Um, by containing the problem uh, this way, uh, you know we're uh, we're able to define exactly what the service is and make sure that we can you know ensure quality of service for that uh, for that definition. Um, again, we use that the next level that's a, a big performance boost is the HTTP proxy cache. We have our own custom asynchronous uh, web proxy. It actually stores the data in uh, memcache. Um, and of course, it uh, it needs a hash key to work on. And uh, in this case, you know, make sure that you use the entire URL, including the the layer number, uh, because when you when you switch that layer number, you want the uh, the caches to invalidate and uh, you know pick that pick the new tiles up off of disk. Um, part of scalability we found out is also you know displaying these thousands of little uh, pins on the map. Um, all JavaScript libraries were not necessarily created equal. Uh, Open Layers is a good choice, and Leaflet is also a, a very good choice in, and gaining in popularity. Um, we use Leaflet. It it is uh, has fewer capabilities, but it does the few things that it does. It does very well. Uh, it's very small and lightweight. Um, one of the things that we take advantage of uh, because we are putting you know thousands of pins um, on a map at the same time is clustering. Um, I found in terms of making something that's uh, usable that if you've got all these pins and they're too close to each other, like people don't want to zoom in and then click on it and then, the, and then they're like, no, that's not what I want and then have to zoom out and get to the next one. So um, by, by clustering, it gives them the ability to sort of uh, you know, zoom in uh, and the location they're more interested in and then um, uh, easier pick the individual pins that way. So. Um, Another thing to think about is you're you're not going to be you're serving up the map. You have to you have to uh, serve up that uh, that pin layer. Uh, so you have to serve up that data. People are using GeoJSON. Uh, in our case, it's just you know we're just putting points. There's no uh, no polygon data, etc. GeoRSS or Homegrown. We use Homegrown. We found that uh, we could uh, we could optimize a little bit more there. Um, you're going to have in our case, because we're just dynamically pulling um, a bunch of points, we don't know where the center of those, where we should center the map, or what zoom level it's got to be at. We compute that uh, dynamically. Um, in case doing the the, uh, the center, we kind of just do the median of the the lat lons, and that works out. And then there's just a little bit more math to sort of figure out. Uh, now that we know the center, you know where things are at, and you know where the farthest things are at, where the center is at. Uh, we can sort of compute a, um, a zoom level from there. Um, however, you have to be careful of uh, your JavaScript performance. Um, early on, we were um, we were creating the the marker layer, the points layer, and then applying that to the map, and then adding the points to the map, and that ended up. It works fine in Firefox and um, uh, Chrome, but for Internet Explorer, I think that ended up taking like two or three minutes to display everything because it wants to re-render between every uh, pin ad. So, um, you know, be aware that these uh, couple of thousand of markers will start to tax your JavaScript, the JavaScript on on, mar on browsers. Not all browsers act the same; they all act differently. Um, so, the lesson we learned was uh, first add all your points to the layer. Um, and then add your add that extra layer to the map, so it just renders at one time. That was a you know one JavaScript performance uh, lesson there. Um, so in conclusion, uh, creating a uh, a map that will work at Craigslist style. How do you do it? You reduce scope and declare victory. No, you um, you kind of redefine and reparameterize the problem into something that is uh, solvable that you can do it. In this case. Uh, by rendering the, you know, pre-rendering 
the entire world from 0 to 11, and then just the areas that we needed down to 17, skipping 18 altogether, uh, made this problem tractable and quite doable uh, you know, uh, in the time that we had. Um, another thing to think about is, you know, on your map style and in your map import, don't include things that you're just not going to use. You know, it's just dead weight dragging around. Um, use an OSM um, extract from like Geofabric or something. Filter out. It's before you import that data to your PostGIS or whatever you're using. Try filtering out points of interest, restaurants and stuff that maybe uh, aren't interesting. You know, to your map to your users. Um, less is more. Use a minimal map style and then add layers on top of that for uh, for better usability and better performance. Um, I think that a lot of the harder stuff in terms of uh, making a map that's scalable in terms in human terms also is the internationalization. Uh, if you look on some of the areas like uh, Korea or Japan, when the labels are in English, they're also in the native languages, and so. When you're looking at the label, it's it's really uh, it's really giant. So you know that's a problem to be to be solved. I think in the style, um, being multi-platform, uh, displaying that on the map e equally as well on all inter uh, web platforms as well as tablets and mobile phones. Um, thinking about the user experience, uh, making it making keeping the user constantly in mind and making a map that works for them and not just you know. Uh, not for you, the developer, and think about how to sell this to your to your colleagues. Think, think about the sysadmins that are going to have to uh, uh, maintain this thing at, um, and get paged at two o'clock in the morning and wonder what the heck's going on. So in this case, uh, you know, pre-rendering so far has made it pretty pretty bulletproof, and um, and that's it. So thank you very much. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Thank you. Uh, Craigslist is hiring. You've noticed there's a booth downstairs. There's really nice, friendly people down there. So please come up and talk to us. Have a candy bar. Um, thank you very much. Let me show you one more thing. Um, it does actually work. Here, for example, is a search for BART. And I'm, what I'm trying to show, this is an apartment search. These are people that are saying that, that their apartments are near BART. This one isn't as clear, but what could you search for that would actually show this? How about Caltrain? So take a look at that. So I think you can see that th it, this uh, the the uh, clusters here where people are saying that their apartments are near Caltrain are kind of lining up right with the Caltrain map. So when we when first time we ran that query, I was like, oh my god, that's really cool. It works. So that's cool. So everybody everybody try it. Um, come talk to us. Any qu any questions? <laughs> Thanks. Okay. See so your hand up over here. Um, so, so far we are serving maps in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, we hope to uh, expand that. The current bottleneck is actually the geocoder. But um, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we shipped a feature that allows people that are posting housing ads to add a um, to add a note to the OSM using the new OSM notes interface. Uh, that allows them to say, we think there's a problem with the map data here. And uh, so far, the uptake, I think, has been uh, better than expected. And, um, you know, we'd like to, we'd like to uh, keep this uh, righteous circle going because we have local users. They use the local data. And, you know, we're consuming the map, so we want to keep that feedback going. But uh, so far, so good. There are, there are areas that are improving, and we're, we're trying to, you know, crowdsource that a little bit using our users to just give back a little bit, maybe just drop a point and say something's funky here. So, yep. Any other question? No one? Okay, thank you very much.